Amanda Jordan at Rickety Roo, and today I'm going to be talking about how to create kick-ass local landing pages. I talked about this topic at MozCon in 2022. I did some research on the top 50 pages in the U.S. and uh, home services businesses that ranked on the first page. And then I reviewed those pages and reviewed the and analyzed the features that they were using on those pages to determine what makes a winning location landing page. So uh, the most popular features are listed here. 61% of the home services businesses that ranked on the first page had reviews on their location landing pages. Uh, I think that's pretty much a given now, even though 60, only 61% of there is 39% who were not doing it. Uh, but that's pretty much a given in my opinion is that you should have reviews on that page. If for any uh, other sake other than being able to use uh, the structured data for it, for the conversion rate optimization, just providing users with a reason to trust you and believe that you're good at your job. So like just for any other reason, uh, that would be the, the basic reasons why you want to do that. 32% uh, had a unique value proposition. So something to set them apart from their competitors. I think that's actually very low and that should be something that really all businesses should be striving for is setting themselves apart. Uh, you don't want to just be another site that's saying, hey, you can give me money for my services. You want, to want them to know why they want to choose you. And that is something that you do in unique value proposition. Only a quarter of them included any type of sale or coupon, which is a huge missed opportunity. So if you're seeing that your competitors aren't offering a coupon or sale, that's an opportunity you for to snag business from them. Um, if they're shopping around and going to multiple websites, if you're the only one that is offering a coupon, um, they don't know that you might be, I don't know, 10% more expensive from your competitor until they call and get a quote. So if you're offering 15% off, you may actually snag a customer and only have to get them 5% off because they don't know what your prices are compared to your competitor. So that is a good way to uh, get more clients in, get more conversions. And then only 18% had awards or recognitions mentioned on the page. I think that's a missed opportunity as well because those are trust signals. Those show people that they, they can trust your business, that you're recognized in your industry, that you do good work. So these are the features that I found on those uh, businesses in the top 50 most populated cities in the United States uh, where they ranked on the first page. These are the features they were using the most. There were some standouts where they had almost everything you could think of as far as features. And then there were others where they were getting lucky, like low competition. Their business had been along for a really long time, around for a really long time. So they didn't have to put in that much effort to rank well because everyone knew them and they're almost like a, a uh, fixture in their community. So if you put in that type, look for plumbing in that city, that's just what's going to show up. Uh, so really, when you're thinking about your location pages, you should be trying to answer these questions. I put them here because I think like a detective a lot of times when I review sites, and I like true crime a lot. So I think about it as uh, kind of putting together what am I looking for, almost, almost like Clue. Like you want to know what's going on, who did what, where, when, why, how. So when you look at your competitors, answer these questions, and when you're thinking about your own location landing pages, answer these questions to you. Who are you trying to reach out to? Um, who are, who is your business? Who are you? Who, what's your business? Uh, what are you trying to offer them? Um, what are their concerns? Why should they choose you over competitors? When are you the best choice for them? Where can they uh, contact you and how can they contact you? All of these questions should be answered on every location landing page. If you're not answering all these questions, then People are going to have to search around on your website to find those answers, or they're just going to leave and go to a competitor who can more easily answer those questions. And if you think about it, this is a lot of what Google tries to answer in your Google business profile as well. So if you want, you should be matching up, not necessarily word for word what's on it, but think about the features that Google is trying to show in their own tool um, and make sure that those features also exist on your location landing page. So you want to answer these questions and how you want to answer them. Um, you want to use these, t this, these types of data. You want to use first party data. So you, you know your customers, you've worked with them, you likely have a CRM that you use. You want to use that CRM to accumulate valuable data and use it on your pages. If you know that at certain times of the year certain issues exist for a certain amount of houses and you're in home services, say, you know, the summer months, you already know in the summer months AC units are going to need maintenance repair. Uh, put the percentage of homes that you serve with those issues during those months on that page. 
in that area that's automatically adding unique content that no one else has. Uh, and that Google's gonna see too as unique content that's data-driven content, that's interesting content. So not only is it something that is uh, unique to your page and not more generic than content that people are used to seeing, but it's also something that may be interesting enough that people will share with others, that may be used in other, for other reasons for, as a source for other things as well. Third-party data. So you want to use statistics, FAQs, things that you can find around the internet that you know uh, is true, um, that is relevant to your business, and is relevant to that specific location so that you can be as unique as possible within your content without being duplicative at all. And then user-generated content. Uh, your users should be leaving you reviews. If they're not leaving you reviews, you should be asking them to leave reviews. So that's, that's one of the things that you can do. Uh, comment sections on websites. There's lots of clients that I've had, especially in e-commerce, uh, where they have e-commerce and local together, where they have a comment section where you, people can talk about their experiences. Not like in a review place, but ask questions, give feedback on some things, things like that. Uh, communicate with each other, almost like a forum sometimes too. And that's a ton of user-generated content that's right there that you didn't have to write that's about your products and services in your business. Uh, and it will uh, show up at, in Google as well. So it's more usable content that you could have someone else produce for you. And here are my do's and don'ts of creating a location landing page. I'm gonna start with the don'ts because I see these issues frequently, even when uh, businesses have the best intention, when they've hired an SEO, when they've hired a marketing director. Uh, I see that they run into these issues a lot and they're hard to overcome. Um, not to belittle, like, like it's, they are difficult. Duplicate content is a huge issue for location landing pages. Thin and generic content are huge issues. But if you look at your data sources that you could actually pull from, easily scale, scale with scalability, so you don't have to worry about um, someone having to go through and write about unclogging a toilet 200 different ways. You can pull your data about how many house calls you've gotten from about unclogging toilets for seasonally, by area, by zip code, uh, use that data on that page instead. And that's so much more interesting than saying like, hey, if you have a clogged toilet, come call us. Like everyone knows that you want them to do that. Uh, you can make that page more interesting. You could have reviews about people who called you for specific types of issues on that page as well to facilitate that uniqueness uh, and personalization for the user. So uh, really the duplicate content and the thin generic content issues are solved if you use first party, third party user generated content. They will solve those issues for you. And it doesn't have to be something extremely labor intensive. A lot of this data can be pulled from Google Sheets into your website. Uh, don't treat it like a blog. That is another issue I see very commonly is that a business will say, we need a ton of content to get people to come to our location landing page. We want this page to rank really well but they forget that it's also about bringing someone in and making them want to make a decision to work with you on that one page. It's a landing page, so you, they shouldn't have to go anywhere else to determine if they want to work with you or not. So the, and that's by answering these questions, you give them all the information they need to decide that they want to work with you and you want to do it in a way that's engaging and interesting. So you don't want to have a huge block of text with no, nothing breaking it up. You want to include those, any sales or coupons, awards, reviews, unique value propositions throughout that content to break it up and give them multiple opportunities to decide that they've read enough, they've heard enough, and they're ready to work with you. Uh, so these are my steps and recommendations for creating a kick-ass local landing page. If you want to discuss more, you can find me on Twitter at Amanda T. Jordan.